Welcome back everyone. So I am back home for the holidays here for a bit and you know what that means is I get to get a little bit more work done than usual on my speedster here. And a lot of people have their own project cars and stuff, but how many people build their own radiator basically from scratch? So I've been building this car over the past six years almost by now and this is something that really stands out to me as something that I've impressed myself with. And if you've been following along with this build, uh, I think you'll think the same. So I'm going to show you how I took the original radiator from this Jag engine, um, shortened and narrowed the core, and fabricated these custom tanks with the ports exactly where I want. Leak checked everything in the end, and this was quite a process, but what a beautiful result. And I really hope you enjoy. Okay, so this is the original copper and brass radiator that I got with that Jag engine there. And I've been inspecting this here. Parts of it seem all right. Um, there are some some da some damaged areas to the, the core here. It's difficult to tell though how much you, these are just bent fins versus what's actually gonna cause a leak. I know this upper tank here has a, a crack in it right around here. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to plug up the existing holes and then just do a quick like leak check on this to see how bad of a condition this is that I'm starting out with. Alright, so I've got about 10 psi in the airline here, or about that. So we'll plug this in and see, see how bad it is. So obviously leak up here near this spout, that's not a big issue. But I don't really see any bubbles in the core. There's a little bit like sort of near the joint between the core and the tank up here. But overall not as bad as I was expecting, which is a really good sign. So the first step was to undo all the soldered connections on this radiator. These first parts I'm taking off here are the steel side plates. These are just used to help mount the radiator. And I'm going to save these to be reused at a later point, although you won't see me do that in this video. And for the tanks here, this is the only time I took out the oxyacetylene torch as opposed to the propane. I was using that little propane torch for a while trying to heat up these tanks enough to, to undo the solder, but it just wasn't up to the task. It was sinking away too much of the heat. So the oxyacetylene torch just opened it right up like a zipper here. You do just have to be careful with that though because that's a much hotter flame and you can um, easily melt more than you're trying to with it. So now that I've got the core isolated, I can start to work at modifying it. And this first cut I'm making here is going to be to narrow the core. And this is pretty straightforward. I'm just cutting down through the middle of one of these fin sections. Those fin sections separate the water passages on either side of it. So I can just cut down in between the water passages here and I'm just heating up and peeling away what used to be a, a wall to one of the water passages. And this will result in a new edge to the radiator. The radiator will, will be basically exactly how it was before, um, just narrower. Shortening it though is gonna be much more difficult here. So I'm making the cuts now uh, to shorten it and you'll see after I'm done here uh, what the challenge is with this. So here's what it looks like, obviously, is the cross section here. You can see these holes here are what the water runs through. So these, these um, cavities are formed by two sheets of copper right here that are crimped together on the ends, and those two sheets run the whole height of the, the core. They're soldered at the joints, and then the fins are a separate piece of copper that's soldered and zigzagged in between um, those cells. And this is not like most um, brass and copper radiators that you'll see that typically have oval shaped tubes in place of this that run the, the height of it. Those oval tubes are then soldered into a plate at the top and bottom, which your tank is, is fixed to. Those are much easier in principle to shorten because you could just take that, you know, undo the solder on that header plate, 
take it off, cut the tube shorter, and then reinstall it onto the shorter tubes. This is much more challenging though because these plates that form the cavities here run the whole length and then at the top they're um, crimped into each other. You can see this is, well this is the bottom, so this is the those sheets that come, you can see the sheets come up and then it just turns over and goes down and then on the opposite side they would be crimped and, and crimped together. So there's no easy way to, to do that. I have to figure out a way to um, seal this up completely because these holes in here, of course, would leak all the water out. So it, this is a pretty big problem, but problems were made to be solved. So I was doing a bunch of tests here with the offcuts I have. The first thing I thought was maybe I could just like fill, clean out this the best I could and then fill in the, those whole gaps there with solder and this first one actually worked better than I expected but the problem is like the, like in the corners here it's tough to get it clean enough and then you know the solder will also just like leak out if you have a little bit of a hole there and that's that just wasn't gonna work um, so then I tried here I tried taking those two sheets and then just sort of folding them over each other like that and then soldering that joint and this was a little bit more promising. The problem is when you just do a like a lap joint like that, it's it's so hard to get and <clears throat> get like a really tight fit that you need in order to hold the solder in there. Then one thing I f figured was, well, if I can take these two walls of this these, these cells up here, crimp them together really tightly there, and then I made this little solder bath here. This is a piece of stainless steel solder in there. You melt that and then dip this in like that on each one of those cells. And you can see that gave me a super clean, super well filled out solder joint. But now there's just no way to bend this, this back in because of course the edges need to be flat too to get a seal all around the edge to the tank. And so after a little bit more um, practice, I came up with this here, which actually looks uh, really promising. Um, I, what I did was, I, you'll see what I did, but I removed a part of the fence at the top, crimped the, crimped the walls together just like you see here, but then before I soldered it, I bent it down and, and flattened it out and then soldered it. And this gives me, you can see, super well filled out solder joints there and um, very flat too along the edges, which, which is what I'll need. So to start out here, you can see I count in five fins, which is what I determined to be um, the number that gives me the most material. And I'm just pushing this little screwdriver through. That just helps separate the fins through the whole width of the core um, and makes it easier for here where I put, I feed through a blade for the coping saw. And I'm just cutting the, the fin there um, at the point where I want to take it out. Remember that that fin is all one continuous piece that zigzags back and forth. So I'm cutting it here at the point uh, where I want to take it out at and just very gently here with a propane torch, I'm heating it up using the pliers here to just dig out those last five fins there um, at the edge. Once all those fins are out, again, with very gentle touch with the torch here, I'm splitting these walls to the water passages. Each of those two sheets together um, forms the water channels. And so now I'm just splitting it down, trying to be very careful not to split it farther than I want to. But once I got all that done here, I'm sandblasting each and every one of them. This obviously helps to clean it up so that when I go to solder this back together, I'll have a nice clean joint there that the solder will uh, stick to much more easily. And sandblasting it definitely had the effect of work hardening um, the copper, because I'm effectively shot peening it, and uh, that makes the copper much harder and more difficult to bend. Not impossible, but I'm sort of going through with the torch there to anneal it a little bit, which will help it bend a little bit more easy right here where I go to crimp it back together. And you can see here, I'm just using a variety of hand pliers. Uh, there's really no, no efficient way around this. You just have to be 
very patient here with the pliers and slowly going through and crimping these two sheets back together. You can see I made that little steel piece that I slide in um, at the very top there. That helps keep everything nice and flat and you'll, you'll see it comes in handy a little bit later too when I go to um, hammer that seam really flat as well. So here you can see that little steel piece come in handy again. I'm basically just using it as an anvil here to, to hammer those seams really flat against. I made those two pieces of plywood there as well to keep um, everything at the exact same height. So I can just go down the whole length of it, hammer all those seams super tight and that keeps it level. And I'm also touching up the ends of it here as well because this is where the tanks are gonna solder to. So I wanna make that edge even more flat than the rest of it. So once it's all ready to go here, I just brushed on a little bit of flux, laid a, a stick of solder on there, and I'm definitely using way more solder here than I would actually need to, but I wanna be um, safe rather than sorry with this because finding a leak in here at a later point would be uh, much more difficult than just using a little bit of extra solder now. So now that the core is pretty much good, I can move on to the tanks. And the tanks are gonna be made out of brass. What I'm doing here with this wood is making a hammer form for um, each of the tanks. This one is for the top tank. You can see it's got this nice gradual sweeping curve across the top edge of it. And this is gonna be serving as a template and literally a hammer form uh, for this brass. So you can see I'll take a the sheet of, it's 25 thousandths thick, 260 grade brass. Uh, it's the same brass they use to make uh, shell casings and things like that. So it's it's very formable. I haven't done anything to it right now. I'm just um, hammering this over cold. On some of the areas where I need a little bit more um, curvature here and, and more complex shape, I will heat up the brass um, just to just get it hot and let it cool down. That helps to anneal it a little bit more and makes it easier to bend. But you can see here is the, the sort of top edge of that and it's coming along pretty nicely. So that was the top piece. Each of the tanks are made out of three pieces of, of brass here. And this is one of the side pieces here. Um, you can see I'm just bending over this 90 degree flange on there. Uh, these are pretty straightforward, although this one is going to be for um, the, the back side where I have two ports coming out of it. So for doing the ports there, I want to have like a nice little flange that sort of sticks out from the tank and contours to the tubes. So here I'm making another hammer form. I'm drilling these two holes uh, where I want my ports to come out. Here you can see I'm annealing the edge of the, the brass there. And just using this hammer form now, I'm going to bend this brass in or hammer it in around that tube and this will be um, where I have my ports pass through. All right, so here is the top tank all assembled. You can see I made the tubes here as well. And you can see I've designed these um, so that they pass through this first wall and then also anchor uh, back into the other side. And that will make these way more rigid and a lot stronger than this sort of design 
where they just come in and are fastened or soldered to uh, one wall here. I got all the parts here cleaned and fine tuned and they're fitting really nicely. And so the next step is to solder everything together. So to start soldering this, you can see I've got a lot of clamps here to clamp it together. And I've laid out some pieces of solder there along the whole length of the seam. And this isn't getting me the entire solder joint here, but it's getting me most of it. And then I'll go back and take the clamps off and then now I'll go back and touch up uh, parts of the seams that I missed where the clamps were. And so this will give me a really nice uniform seam here. And by doing it from the inside like this, you can see at the top one there, I get that really nice clean line of solder um, on the exterior of the tank right at that joint. So there's no sort of um, sloppiness with a bunch of solder dripping out on the outside of the tank where you would see it. All that's sort of kept to the inside here. The top tank now is all soldered together and what I'm doing here is tinning the flange where it's going to meet the core. Um, so I'm just wiping a very thin layer of solder here along that flange and this will help it bond to the solder that's already on the core much more easily. And most of the solder that's actually connecting it is already on the core from when I soldered that. I filed it really flat and all I'm doing now is just running a little bit extra solder there into the joint. And here is the bottom tank, same construction as the top tank, just these three pieces here. Although the bottom outlet port that I'm going to add to this, I'm going to add it after I solder this together because I have some pretty tight clearance between um, the, the outlet port, which I'm making from this copper pipe, and the fan on the engine. I, I will have to shorten the blades on the fan, but I'm trying to make it um, as minimally invasive as possible. Okay, so I've got it, the radiator positioned in here right now with this outlet port taped on. And you can see this is, I've cut out this piece of cardboard here to show me like the real diameter of the fan there. These couple cutouts here are some like sort of stepped areas to give me an idea of what the, that radius looks like if I shorten the blades a certain amount. And you can kind of see here like it doesn't actually look like it's going to interfere too much. This, this circle right here that edge is if I were to shorten the blades by one inch and that's that even gives plenty of clearance so I won't have to shorten the blades by all that much which is pretty good and this seems to, to fit in there um, really well the outlet port will have a 90 that comes down points pretty much straight down because you can see the port from the water pump is on this side right there also pointing straight down so I'll have a hose that sort of just loops underneath the front part of the engine here uh, to connect and I think that'll work out pretty well. And once I got that bottom port soldered on exactly where I want it, I can solder the bottom tank to the core again, same way I did with the top tank. So I started by uh, tinning that flange first and then just running a little bit of extra solder here as I move along with the torch. How cool is this? I just went over it and looked at all the seams really closely and I touched up a couple areas that I thought might create a leak. 
But now is the time for the all important leak check to see how good of a job I did. Um, so let's do that. Well, I'm definitely nervous right now. You know that feeling you get when everything's been going right and then all of a sudden you have this just sense of dread set in? <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> and we'll see. Okay, so there's a couple leaks. Definitely one just right up here. Looks like obvious, obviously one back here. I'm not sure if that's on the other side or not. And then a couple of really small ones here. There were a number of little pinhole leaks that were that are pretty easy to patch, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, just sort of go along with the dab a little bit of solder on there. The difficult one though was this one right here at the top edge of the, um, the tank. And this one is actually sort of like in the middle of the core you can see here um, where the bubbles are coming out. And that was much, much more challenging. But you can see I've got this, I had this idea here to, <laughs> to try to plug it and I'll let you figure out uh, what I'm doing here with the solder. Okay, by now you've probably figured out what's going on here. The solder is around that wire, and the wire here is short-circuited to my battery charger. So in theory, when I flip the switch here to uh, 40 amps, this wire will get red hot, melting the solder, and heating the, uh, the copper and brass around it enough that it sort of like wets into it and plugs the leak. I did do some some tests here in some of my other pieces and it seems like this can work. The issue is that I I don't know exactly where the whole, the leak is. I've I pinpointed it sort of to to this side of that one that one cell and about here in terms of the the depth. So that's where I've positioned the solder right now. It might take a couple tries in order to get it to work if it does at all, but we will see. So that one didn't work. The solder started to melt, but then the wire broke. So I'm gonna try again with a slightly smaller piece of solder and that might help a little bit more. So that didn't work. It, it was a cool idea, but it didn't end up working. Uh, one thing that did help a little bit was this little uh, funnel I made to sort of funnel in that torch to be a smaller, more fine point. But this still took a long time to get this leak out. All right, well, it is many hours later now. I had my dad with me most of the afternoon and we were, he was helping me go through and, and plug up all the leaks. We ended up finally getting this one in the center here. That gave us a lot of problems though to try to get that plugged up. You can see what we had to do is take out some of these fins here at the top just to give us enough room to one, actually see where the leak was and then also give us enough room to get in there with the torch to sort of melt the solder in there. That, that leak ended up being like basically right in the middle of the core here. And so there really just wasn't any way to get into that through this tiny little gap there. So we had to take out some fins, but it is finally plugged up. All the other little pinhole leaks that we could find are plugged up. And so, I mean, that's pretty much that. I'll take it over to the chassis here in a second to show you it on the car, but I just want to take a moment to appreciate this by itself. Like how cool is that? Fully custom, custom made, ma mainly from scratch. I mean, modifying this core was a, quite an ordeal and of course making the tanks from scratch too. Um, so here you can see I've got it now nestled into the grill shell there and it just fits so perfectly. That's amazing. So you can see the inlet port right here that connects to this manifold on the engine. This 
tube here will be for the fill cap. You can see this is the, the fitting for that right there. Uh, I don't have the actual cap, which is why I haven't finished this yet. So I left this tube a little longer than it needs to be, but I'll eventually at a later point, I'll modify it to adapt this on there and cap the end of it as well. The um, outlet port is down there, of course. I've got my by 90 for that, which will point it, point it down. This tube is also much longer than it needs to be, so I will go back and fine tune that at a later point as well. But how cool is that? You can see from the front here too, the nice brass there shining through, which I really like the look of. I had always planned to paint this bottom aluminum area of the grill shell black to help it blend in. And I might do that with the front of the radiator too, but I'm not sure. I will definitely leave the exposed brass on the back side here because um, that's just way too nice to not show off. I'm definitely not gonna cover that up with some paint. Um, but yeah, that is awesome. So thanks for watching. This has been a really fun project, really challenging too. I was definitely pushing my limits at some point of this, but I, I couldn't be happier with how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed to follow along. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.